So let's talk about what is happening, what's actually happening here, we think. We think if we increase monoamines, we're going to bind to receptors because we know that these monoamines bind to the receptors and then we have second messenger systems. So here's a monoamine, let's say serotonin or norepinephrine, and now we get second messenger systems. We've got G protein, G coupling, um, we've got an enzyme that then phosphorylates, essentially, and you get second and third messengers, and ultimately what you're trying to do here is get to uh, calcium calmodulin dependent protein kinase. These are protein kinases, basically that then give you CREB, which is C-A-M-P response element binding protein, in case you're wondering. And ultimately what you want to do now is affect transcription here and produce BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotrophic growth factor. And then you get all these wonderful things. So notice that a lot of steps, a lot of things have to happen when you're coming at it from outside the cell with monoamines like this, right? So a lot of steps happen ultimately that get us to synaptogenesis, new synapses, neuroplasticity, cell survival, and neurogenesis. Okay, so synaptogenesis, neuroplasticity, cell survival increasing, neuroprotection, and neurogenesis making ner new nerve cells. So that's ultimately might, might be what's going on. Most effective antidepressants have been shown to, to do these things in the brain. All right, now, we have many different signaling cascades here. As you can see, we've talked about some of the kinases already and some of the other things. Activating CREB seems to be one of the common pathways here because that helps us to turn on genes to influence transcription of DNA. And then we can do things like express more ample receptor subunits.